What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my neurology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about the different types of strokes, including ischemic strokes and hemorrhagic strokes. We talked about the different types of shock, such as cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock, septic shock, anaphylactic shock, obstructive shock, hypovolemic shock, etc. We had lectures on multiple sclerosis and Guillain-Barre syndrome, myasthenia gravis and Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. We talked about amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease, sleep physiology and sleep disorders like insomnia, narcolepsy and restless leg syndrome. We discussed seizures, delirium, dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease and brain herniation. Today we shall talk about carpal tunnel syndrome which affects the median nerve as it gets compressed in the carpal tunnel under the flexor retinaculum. Click the like button, click the subscribe button and let's get started. I have several neuro playlists on this channel. The first one is neuroanatomy, the second one is neurophysiology, and the third most comprehensive one is neurology, which contains neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, neuropharmacology, and neuropathology. This is the arm, this is the elbow joint, this is the forearm. This is the flexor retinaculum, and this is the palm of the right hand. The carpal tunnel is here. It's a tunnel in the carpal bones. These are the carpal bones, here's the carpal tunnel, and this is the flexor retinaculum. This is anterior, flexor surface. This is posterior, extensor surface. These are the tendons of the flexor muscles that are passing underneath or deep to the flexor retinaculum. How many carpal bones do you have? The answer is I have eight carpal bones in each wrist. But how many tarsal bones do you have? The answer is seven. The carpal bones are in your wrist, but the tarsal bones are in your ankle. Let's memorize the eight carpal bones. The classic mnemonic of antiquity goes like this. Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. So this is the left hand. Lateral is here near the thumb. Medial is here near the pinky or the little finger. Some lovers try position that they can't handle. So let's start with some. The S is the scaphoid bone. Here's the scaffold. Lovers, the lunate. Here's the moon. Try, triquetrum, the triangle queen. Positions, the pisiform, pizza farmer. And then after finishing the first four, you go back to the lateral side and start again. That, T, trapezium. They, another T, trapezoid. Can't, C, capitate. Here's the captain. Handle, H, hamate. Here's the ham mate. So the eight carpal bones again are scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid capitate and hamate, scaphoid lunate, triquetrum pisiform, trapezium trapezoid, capitate hamate. If you want to learn about the infamous scaphoid fracture, please refer to my surgery playlist. For more animated pictured mnemonics, go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. They have thousands of picmonics just like this one. Carpal tunnel, what's the definition? It's a fibro, osseous, bony tunnel in front of the wrist. It's more anterior than posterior. What are the boundaries of the carpal tunnel? Anteriorly, it's bound by the flexor retinaculum. Posteriorly, by the carpal bones and their interosseous ligaments. What are the structures passing through the carpal tunnel is a very high yield exam question. Beloved by all anatomy professors since time immemorial. The structures that pass through the carpal tunnel include the median nerve, of course, and this is the nerve that gets compressed in the carpal tunnel under the flexor retinaculum to give me the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. Besides the median nerve, we have eight tendons of flexor muscles, four superficial and four deep or profundus. So we have the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis and the four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. Add to that one tendon of the flexor pollicis longus. What is the pollux? It's your thumb. How about the big toe? It's called hallux. And the recurrent branch of the deep palmar arch, which is an arterial network found in the palm of the hand. So, what's the median nerve? If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop a brain emoji in the comments. 
I hope that you have watched my previous video on the brachial plexus. See my anatomy playlist. Recall that the brachial plexus consists of the anterior primary rami, or the ventral rami, of C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. Cervical spinal segments 5, 6, 7, 8, and thoracic 1. Remember how we memorized the brachial plexus? Everything was 5. We have five compartments, roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. And regarding each one, you need to know five facts. Five facts about the roots, five facts about the trunks, five facts about the divisions, five facts about the cords, and five facts about the branches. Today, we'll just focus on the branches. What are the five terminal branches? The musculocutaneous nerve, the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, the axillary nerve, and the radial nerve. Today we're talking about the median nerve, which has a lateral root, courtesy to the lateral cord, and a medial root, courtesy to the medial cord. Where did the lateral cord come from? From the union of the anterior division of the upper trunk with the anterior division of the middle trunk. And where did the medial cord come from? From the anterior division of the lower trunk. As for the posterior divisions of all of the trunks, the upper trunk, the middle trunk, and the lower trunk, they united together to give me the posterior cord. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. So again, we have roots, trunks, divisions, cords, terminal branches. The terminal branches are the musculocutaneous nerve, the median nerve, the ulnar nerve. And then from the posterior cord, you have the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. Which one supplies the biceps muscle? Musculocutaneous. Which nerve supplies the triceps muscle? Radial. Which one supplies the deltoid muscle? If you know the answer to this question, please comment below. Do you want more anatomy in your life? I have covered all the branches of anatomy in very high yield review videos. I have review videos for the anatomy of the upper extremity, the lower extremity, anatomy of the head and neck, anatomy of the thorax, anatomy of the abdomen, the pelvis and perineum, even neuroanatomy and embryology. You can find all of them in my anatomy playlist here on YouTube. And I've covered all of these anatomy branches. For example, anatomy of the thorax was covered in three videos. Part one, quick review. Part two, ultimate review. Part three, clinically oriented anatomy of the thorax. Tell me more about the median nerve. Is it sensory or motor? The answer is both. What is the root value of the median nerve? What's the origin of the median nerve? Oh, from the spinal cord. Which part of the spinal cord? All of the brachial plexus. C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. That's a big nerve. Where does it start? In your smelly armpit, the axilla, from two roots. Lateral root from the lateral cord and medial root from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. Then it has a long course, but let's just care about this part. It passes under or deep to the flexor retinaculum and into the carpal tunnel until it reaches the hands. Where does it terminate? At the distal border of the flexor retinaculum by dividing into a medial terminal branch and a lateral terminal branch. The median nerve supplies the first or the lateral three and a half fingers on the palmar aspect of your hand. So this is the palm of my hand. Median nerve is gonna take care of the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and the lateral half of that ring finger, leaving the remaining one and a half fingers on the medial aspect for the ulnar nerve. The median nerve can get injured in many places, most commonly the following three, above the elbow, below the elbow, or inside the carpal tunnel. And this is the story of carpal tunnel syndrome, which is today's video. How do I know if my patient has carpal tunnel syndrome? There are physical exam findings, and then there is nerve conduction study, and then there is electromyography, and you can use ultrasound. Let's start by physical exam. The tunnel test. What is the tunnel test? The way I remember it is that tunnel looks for tingling and numbness, okay? How do I do it? With the T, you tap. You tap on the flexor retinaculum. Tap on the median nerve at the wrist. Normal people will feel no tingling or numbness, but patients with carpal tunnel syndrome are more likely to feel tingling and numbness, or pins and needles. The scientific name for pins and needles is paresthesia. What does that mean? Well, there is normal and there is paranormal. There is esthesia and paresthesia. 
There is somnia and parasomnia. So what is esthesia? Esthesia means sensation. Para, parallel to. Oh, different. Different sensations. Tingling and numbness. But be very careful. The tinnel sign is not the most accurate test there is. So therefore, you can find positive test result even in normal subjects. Just because the tunnel sign is positive doesn't necessarily mean that the patient has carpal tunnel. And just because the tunnel test is negative doesn't necessarily mean that the patient does not have carpal tunnel syndrome. The next physical exam finding is the Fallon sign or the Fallon test. How do you perform it? You ask the patient to flex the wrist and flex it hard. So here is one hand, here is the other hand. The, le the wrist is flexed. And then what? This stretches the median nerve. And if the median nerve is already compressed because I have carpal tunnel syndrome, I will feel what? Tingling and numbness or paresthesia or pins and needles. Where do you feel them? In the lateral three and a half fingers of the palmar aspect of the hand. Here is everything you need to know about carpal tunnel syndrome in one slide. The history. It's more common in females than males. It affects, well, it varies from country to country, but it's about 4% of the population. Causes. Many cases are idiopathic, which means unknown cause, which means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology. Because when doctors do not know the answer, they rarely admit it and say, I don't know. Instead, they will give you some buzzwords, such as idiopathic or primary or my favorite, functional. I cannot stand these mediocre doctors. They drive me insane. I hope they die of brucellosis. Just kidding. Other risk factors include diabetes, obesity, old age, pregnancy. But the carpal tunnel syndrome of pregnancy in most cases is gonna resolve on its own after birth. Why does carpal tunnel syndrome happen during pregnancy? It's probably because of the hormones, estrogen and progesterone, cause swelling in many tissues. They cause vasodilation as well. To learn more about pregnancy, please refer to my obstetrics and gynecology playlist here on YouTube. Other risk factors include autoimmune diseases, hypothyroidism, occupations that involve mechanical overuse of the hand or the wrist, for example, typewriters, mechanics, and other manual occupations. But this is controversial, by the way. Some doctors do not agree that a certain occupation or another causes carpal tunnel syndrome. The symptoms include pain, tingling and numbness. Which part of the hand? The lateral three and a half fingers on the palmar aspect of the hand. These symptoms tend to be worse at night, which can awaken me from my dogmatic slumber. Physical exam findings, positive tenel test, positive Fallon test, and positive Durkan test. What is Durkan test? Instead of tapping on the median nerve, you compress the median nerve. So it's a median nerve compression test. In severe late cases of carpal tunnel syndrome, expect atrophy of the thinner eminence. This part of the hand is called the thinner eminence, and this part is the hypothenar eminence. The elevation known as the thinner eminence is supplied by the median nerve, whereas the hypothenar eminence is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Carpal tunnel syndrome compresses the median nerve, which can lead to atrophy of the thinner eminence. And when it's that late, the motor symptoms will also include weakness of the thumbs, abduction, and opposition. How can we diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome? It's a clinical diagnosis. We can also use nerve conduction studies, electromyography, and ultrasound. What's the treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome? Activity modification. For example, if you are a typewriter, maybe use some support for your wrists while typing. Use voice-enabled dictation instead of typing, for example. Wrist splint, especially at night, because the symptoms tend to be worse at night. Corticosteroid injection might help. If all of this did not work, try low-dose oral corticosteroids. Some people try non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications like ibuprofen, but many doctors think that they do not work well for this disease. Physical therapy can help, and when everything fails, you decompress the poor median nerve from underneath the tyranny of the flexor retinaculum. Usually you make a cut or an incision in the flexor retinaculum to release the pressure from around the median nerve within the carpal tunnel. Let me tell you something important. Do we have tingling and numbness in cases of carpal tunnel syndrome? The answer is yes. So we do have sensory symptoms, but there is no sensory loss. What do I mean by this? Let's draw the same hand again. Okay, 
Nice, this is the Palmar aspect, all right. If you ask your patient, dear patient, close your eyes, okay, and then you're gonna touch the patient here. The patient will feel it. Touch the patient here. In the distribution of the median nerve, the patient can feel it. Here, here, the patient can feel all of this. So, there is no sensory loss. There is just paresthesia. And why is this? Because the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve did not pass within the carpal tunnel under the flexor retinaculum. So therefore, the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve is spared in cases of carpal tunnel syndrome. We just said that NSAIDs do not work too well for this disease. If you decided to try them, do not try them during pregnancy. Why is this? Why is ibuprofen a bad idea during pregnancy? If you know the answer, please comment below. Carpal tunnel syndrome is relatively common during pregnancy. To learn more about normal changes of pregnancy and diseases that happens in pregnancy, download my obstetrics and gynecology high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. To learn about the antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications, download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about myocardial infarction, strokes, cardiac arrhythmias, ARDS, acute limb ischemia, drowning in the toxidromes, download my emergency medicine high yields course. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.